squad based games as, as Michael uh, pretty much mentioned they're a good way to head into the weekend. It was a fantastic performance by the Australian share market. We did see a high beta rally in overnight markets. And if we have a look, commodity prices did well. The U.S. indices within striking distance of a new high for the year. And our market did well as well. All sectors trading higher. But our best sectors were actually the defensive areas. We saw telecom and utilities outperforming the rest of the market. We did see once again low volumes dominating the session. Only $4.4 billion worth of stock being traded. In fact, we struggled to get above four. $5 billion worth of stock traded any day this week and I saw went back a couple of years and had a look and it does look like there is a school holiday effect where we do see low low volumes but big price moves in fact this time last year our market actually managed a gain of 2.4 percent one day something we haven't seen in a while yet in terms of individual stocks so beach petroleum was in focus we saw 2.5 percent of its uh, company shares trading hands so its stock up by 2.7 percent and of course over the weekend a lot of things happening we'll get more details on carbon pricing but also China is going to come out with its inflation numbers over the weekend and inflation is expected to come in at 6.2 percent and of course the US job numbers are uh, tonight. Do you think that the conviction is there to maintain this upward trend and get it to a medium or longer term trend? Well once we saw that downward trend being broken I guess we were due for a bounce and often technical analysts have a look at a 50 percent bounce and if we aim for 50 percent the first target would be 4,000 714 points. Today was a good sign because all week we've been consolidating around 4,600 points. It's good to see our market finally confidently moving away from that mark, so more around the 4,650 point mark. So technically things are looking pretty good at the moment. Some of the macro issues have faded to the background, but I guess what's really going to set the tone for next week's trade are going to be these job numbers out of the US and the inflation numbers coming out of China. Concern from the market lies, I suppose. Who's most impact. There's a lot of talk about the impact on the likes of the resources companies and so forth, but that's pretty much demand driven, isn't it? And I suppose some of those trade exposures are going to be compensated. So who is in the firing line? Some suggesting small business. I guess it's quite fascinating if you have a look at the different metals and how they're impacted. For example, if you have a look at a copper mine, it takes around about seven years to establish a copper mine. So if you're looking at a copper mine, say in five or six years time, then you want to know what the uh, carbon pricing details are and how it's really going to impact on operations and at what point profitability kicks in. So when you are looking at greenfield developments, brownfield developments, um, mining developments, it's going to be crucial in being able to evaluate either um, new plans or even expansions to existing plans. I mean aluminium's a big one where we see 40 percent of the cost of aluminium coming from electricity prices and of course those steel companies very much in focus. Now Professor Ogano recommended a, a carbon price originally between 20 to 30 dollars and most analysts have been doing modeling based on a midpoint of that of 25 dollars. So when we started to see details of a, a, a price of 23 dollars being leaked to the market uh, this week we did see some positive impact for the market and of course the renewable energy fund as well. Geodynamics was the best performer in the All Ordinaries Index today. It managed a jump of almost 20% in just one session. So those green stocks certainly seem to benefit on the market from that announcement. But altogether in terms of the announcement on Sunday, there's a few variables that could impact on the market. First of all, we want to know what the price on our carbon is going to be per tonne. Secondly, any concessions, how long are they going to go on for? Is it three to five years are we going to see um, a big decline in terms of the benefits from those concessions uh, quite quickly and the subsidies as well so well, we will be looking at a, a number of things when this comes out but of course we've seen a massive impact in terms of one steel blue scopes uh, prices this week we've seen uh, one steel up by 10 percent and blue scope up by nine percent this week we have a look at our bell potters modeling they're saying at a carbon price of 25 dollars it's going to impact on our blue scopes valuation between about 17 to 35 percent negatively and one still six to 14 percent and then of course the variables are the subsidies um, and how long they go on for. Of them through the week the winners and losers? Well, the big winners this week were the airlines. We saw Tiger being grounded to the 1st of August. It makes up about, up about 4 to 6 percent of the domestic market. So great news for Qantas and especially Virgin Blue because of its alliance with Singapore Airlines, which owns one third of Tiger. In fact, if we have a look at Virgin's performance this week, up a massive 23 percent, while Qantas was up by 8 percent. On the downside, though, the worst performer in the ASX 200 this week was Merchison Metals. Not surprising given that they came out with that announcement.
concern about the cost blowouts with this Okaji project and also some doubt uh, regarding the valuation of its Jack Hill, Hills project as well. So altogether a pretty volatile week but all up a, a good one for the Australian share market with a gain of 1.4%.